Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and it feels like just earlier this week I was covered in Godot 4.6 Dev 6 because, well, I was. But the thing is, Godot Beta 1 is finally here. So we're going to do a bit of a recap. I've already covered all of the dev releases except for 4, which I somehow missed. So we're going to jump in and take a look at what is new in this release. So the cool thing about uh, the 4.6 Beta is it means this one is finally uh, feature froze. So what you're seeing here, 4.6, unless something goes wrong and it gets taken out, this is what we should expect to see when Godot 4.6 finally is released. So we get an idea of all of the new features in Godot 4.6. So let's go jump in and take a look at them. By the way, this is a demo from or a, a level from a bundle that's going on for Godot projects. I will show you that later on. It's only going to run for a couple more days if you are interested. All right. So what is new in this release? Well, first off, my favorite new thing, editor, editor settings, themes, over here and you're going to notice there is now a modern theme. This is the passive star theme. This is the theme I was kind of unofficially using all along and I, I love it. I think it spaces things nicely. I think it looks really nice. And on top of that, another neat feature I can demonstrate at the same time is when you are changing themes, you no longer actually have to restart, which is nice. Apparently you never had to restart any time at all. Uh, it's just they realized that and then now they stopped asking for you to restart. Another thing you're going to notice with this one is they've changed the way that arrays work. So you can see over here, I've created a very simple array and you can see how it is organized into the scene. So now you've got these top level controllers. It is much more collapsed down in how that it looks. Uh, you can also reorder them very easily by dragging and dropping this outer control panel. Much nicer, much more approachable a way to handle arrays. We also have some uh, changes also, little things like this. So right now you can drag a variable in like so and create a reference to it. You can also control drag a variable in and you will get an on ready version of it. And you can now also alt drag a variable in like this and you will get an export version of it as you'll see export it up here. Nothing too special, but definitely a nice little quality of life thing. Speaking of quality life, we also have this functionality. So you're going to notice here is there is a new uh, controller. Uh, you also still notice down the bottom left corner down here, you will see the degrees amount. So it is just a better rotation controller. I do like that as well. On the topic of rotation, there is another change here. I do find this one a little bit glitchy though, uh, is now if you are moving the mouse around like the orbit view here with the middle mouse button, you can actually hold down the alt key and it snaps in 45 degree increments. So if you want to position things again, like top left and so on, you can do so. Now what you notice here is I navigated up above the city before I did this. So same thing here, middle mouse button. And now when I do it, it doesn't, work as well, or we snap into buildings or so on. So this is definitely one of those features I think needs a little bit more work, but I love the basic idea behind it. Also, speaking of features that are awesome, but need a little bit more work is this is now part of the newly rewritten docking system. So you're going to notice here down here, these guys, you can actually right click them. Now you can't float them over to where you could to other locations, but you can make every single one of these minus one floating. So if you want to have your output window somewhere else, you can do so. Same thing here, audio. Uh, I could go ahead and float that. I can also grab this one here and I can move it in the dock position using this one. We just don't have full control over the dock like we would have before. Now what you're going to notice here is I did not show it with the debugger and that's frankly because uh, that one you can't change, unfortunately. One of the limitations there, by the way, any one of these, you basically can open up that window again. So I got the output window floating over here. I kill it and then it shows up back down there. Uh, once again, if I bring up the audio, uh, the audio one, boom, it shows up back down there as well. So you're getting improvements on what you can do with this bottom dock, which I am happy to see. Another major change that came is uh, working towards HDR support. They've really changed the way uh, that AGX works and glows and so on. I can just demonstrate this in action if we change out tone mapping over here, we'll go from linear over to AGX and there you see the end result. Now, when you start cranking up the contrast on this though, it's going to give you much better results and it's going to deal with glows better as well. So uh, the AGX tone mapper, as they move more towards an HDR future, definitely some improvements there. Now, probably one of the biggest new things here though, uh, is a new set of features and they're all around IK. So now you've got these, um, this IK or inverse kinematic modifier under skeleton 3D and you're going to notice you have a bunch of different implementations. So Fabric, Jacobian, CC Dick, uh, their wording, not mine. Uh, we can see actually a demo of them from another project here showing here's Fabric, CD, CCDIC, and Jacobian on the move. Basically, the way Inverse Kinematic is, 
is it allows this so you see this bottom node right over here or this one right here it follows it or or, or translates after so you can use this for doing things like uh ponytails or fabrics or that kind of stuff so we got a bunch of new inverse kinematic objects or, or options added into Godot 4.6. Probably the biggest new technical feature in this one. Although again, to me, I absolutely love the fact that we've moved to this particular set of styling. I, I'm really impressed with that. So let's head on over and take a look at the release notes now. By the way, I did mention there is this Godot bundle ongoing. So if you want to pick up a number of environments here, these are all available. It's available, I think it's $39. Use the code BF60. Knocks the price down by 60 bucks from 99 to 39. And this is exactly where this particular environment came from. So you see uh, over here, this is the one I used here, but you see a number of different environments, all modular. So you can pick out just the pieces you need for your individual project. I love seeing uh, creators start to create bundles for the Godot uh, platform. So I, I kind of encourage this stuff and heavily promote it. Also, it does help support me if you do pick it up. So thank you very much if you do. All right, Godot 4.6 Beta 1. What have we got here? Again, this is the version, no more new features. This is it. I'm not going to go through all of the details. I, I highlighted what I think are some of the coolest features. This is cumulative from de Dev 1 through Dev 6, and I covered each one of those individually in the past. A big new thing, of course, is the IK support uh, under the Skeleton Modifier 3D, uh, various different implementations eight new subclasses uh, again uh, those three right there spline based ik and two bone based ik are in there as well um, we also have direct access to the microphone if you wish which is kind of cool it's considered an experimental feature so who knows if that will ultimately end up being the thing uh, behind the scenes we actually had a lot of things in the core one of the big ones here is profiling support and in the last version that included tracy profiling support uh, including for gd script as well uh, they also have the ability to embed godot as a library which is some pretty powerful functionality if you're using godot's functionality maybe not necessarily for a game project or something else and you want to use godot uh, as a tool that's an option available for you as well improvements to the documentation again the passive star minimal theme is now available as the modern theme and you no longer need to reboot if you do not like the modern theme the classic theme is still available however uh, again a change to the way that arrays are shown much more uh, concise and easier to work with in my humble opinion there um, then we also again have the updates to the dockers you can now undock them move them around this is part of ongoing work so so hopefully we can eventually start docking these elsewhere as well and this other functionality will work and again eventually hopefully you'll be able to do the the uh, debugger here as well right now you cannot uh we got again the new rotation tool there and the snapping uh, at angles again i find this one a little bit glitchy depending on where i am in my scene um gd extensions got some love in that object types are now can now be marked as required. Uh, GD scripts got a couple of improvements as well. One of those again is the profiler integration there. Uh, so you can get better insights into how your GD script is improving. Some better improvement to the logic for mouse and touch is now decoupled from the keyboard and joypad implementation. Improvements to the LOD system so that it collapses down. It does a better job. So you see here the handle goes away eventually, but it's holding the profile of the shape better uh, with this new uh, version than it did with the old version there. So LOD system basically just got improved. Uh, input, uh, responsible for migrating it over to SDL3, laid the foundation for advanced joypad features. Uh, the only functionality enabled at this time is the customization of LED covers, but we're going to get more uh, going forward. Uh, implementation of motion sensors, adaptive triggers, custom data packets, uh, improvements to internationalization, so a CSV translation importing, uh, navigation, uh, so back end, uh, open the door to engine back end selection for navigation servers. Godot does not have additional navigation back ends at this time. It does grant the users a a way of effectively disabling the server via a dummy, removing the need to recomp recompile the engine entirely for games that do not require navigation systems for 2D or 3D. Uh, on the physics side of things, uh, Jolt was integrated before. It is now considered not experimental, so you can basically just create joint, joint, uh, Jolt physics solutions now, and they're not considered experimental, so they're more ready for prime time. On the Android side of things, you got access to the storage access framework support. This means you no longer need to use the manage external storage request. The less permissions you ask of a user on Android, generally the better things are. Uh, you can also do Gradle builds on Android. That means if you're using the Android version of Godot to build for Android, I know we're getting to inception level concepts here, but if you're building for Android on Android and you need to do things that require Gradle, that option is now there. You could 
build Gradle on Android. Uh, Linux uh, Wayland support continues to improve on Windows. Direct3D12 is now the default. Um, Vulkan drivers on Windows are a little questionable. Uh, so that is a change they've made. Uh, here go back to the rendering changes here. So uh, to take full advantage of HDR, uh, some improvements there on the way that uh, Glows works after tone mapping here before the pull request and then after. So you can see the glow results there. And again, the AGX tone mapper. Uh, so there's things out there. Uh, so white and contrast levels and so on for future HDR support on the AGX tone mapper. But you can see here again, as you increase the contrast, you get better results. And here you can see the glow changed for AGX as well. Uh, also screen space reflections got a rewrite. So you can see the various different uh, implementations of it, roughness, new and old, uh, and so on. And then XR, a number of improvements there, including support for XR 1.1, uh, support for spatial entities extensions, and so on. And that is it. So it consists of also 1,483 fixes from 328 contributors uh, since the release of the 4.5 stable. So what you see here, these are the features. This is what you are going to get in Godot 4.6. Again, there are going to be more betas. I am not going to do any more videos on them. I doubt I will cover release candidates either because quite frankly, this is it. This is Godot 4.6 feature set uh, unless something gets taken out. So I'm curious, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And again, if you're interested, uh, this bundle is only running for a couple more days. So if you want to get some uh, asset environments directly in Godot format, could be a good pickup, but do remember to use the code BF60. It's available down below when you're checking out uh, and it knocks 60 bucks off the price. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.